NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. New information at this hour about the fatal shooting at a bar in Madison that left one person dead. We'll have more in a live report. Plus, we go to Texas where historic flooding has left neighborhoods submerged with more rain on the way. And a peaceful protest over the so-called Jesus lunches at Middleton High is expected in about one hour. This is your weather authority forecast. All right, let's take a look at that weather forecast for you. You can see on the radar screen things lighting up a bit. Uh, we do have some showers west and south of Madison now, very light, uh, but occasional light showers expected during the afternoon, evening into tomorrow as well. Right now, as you step out the door, it's cloudy, 51 degrees, east winds up at 14. And we have rising pressure through the afternoon hours. Uh, we will top off at about 60 today with those occasional light showers. We're not going to get much, certainly less than a tenth of an inch in most spots. We'll talk about that in more detail, though, coming up. Charlie, thank you so much. We'll go right to our big story now. One man is dead after a shooting early this morning outside O'Grady's Pub in Madison. That pub is located on Mineral Point Road, the 7400 block. Here it is on your screen. Police are searching for the suspect who shot and killed the victim, who we are told was 30 years old. They know there were witnesses, but they say no one is talking. We know full well there's a lot of people that knows what happened here. 15 to 20 people to be exact, says Chief Mike Koval, who all know one another. Shortly before this disturbance took place, about half of their party went outside where the ensuing gun play then took place. At least eight shots were fired from at least two different weapons, leaving one man dead. There was multiple parties in and around, parties fleeing, and at the end of the day, um, we have one more individual at age 30 dead owing to gunshot wounds. Koval says his biggest challenge is now finding out who pulled the trigger. There's a number of people that have been in and about this scene that have some sort of nexus to the gunshots and certainly to the victim. While they're pursuing a number of leads, they're struggling to get witnesses to talk. A lot of the people who we've stopped, detained, or are persons of interest don't know nothing about nothing. And it's that sort of level of detachment or in some measure, I can only equate it to the, there's, a, there's an axiom out in the streets, uh, snitches get stitches. His message to those who know something? Step forward, step up and step out and tell us what happened and who did what to whom. Now, one other man was grazed by a bullet during uh, the shooting this morning. He was taken to the hospital and released. Reporting live in Madison, I'm Meredith Barrick, NBC 15 News. Meredith, thank you. Also this morning, Houston and surrounding counties are in a disaster zone. That city soaked after rains triggered historic flooding. NBC's Janet Shamlian is in Houston now with more. It was an unprecedented rain event in Houston, as much as 17 inches overnight, triggering flooding like the city hasn't seen in many years. And the fact is it was so widespread. The warning from the National Weather Service was the largest flood warning that it had ever issued. Six million people in the path of danger. Today, the death toll stands at five. All of those came from vehicles that had gone into high water at the height of the storm. No rain right now, but there is rain in the forecast for later today. And the ground in southeast Texas is saturated. The bayous are swollen. And any amount of precipitation in this area will trigger further flooding today. The biggest mistake anybody can make is to assume that the worst has passed. Houston schools have canceled for a second day. A number of roads are closed. The city is trying to find its way back to normal today. Businesses are reopening. People are cleaning up. Janet Chambly and NBC News, Houston. Meantime, NBC 15 is teaming up with Ace Hardware to help you and your family prepare for severe weather in our area. NBC 15's meteorologist Brian Dukes will be at the Ace Hardware in Monroe tonight. If you cannot make it out, you'll have three more chances to get your weather radio programmed by Brian. There's a list of those dates and locations on your screen. 
A grass fire is to blame for a power outage that affected thousands in Madison. The fire department was called to Cottage Grove Road just off I-90 westbound yesterday around 9.30 in the morning. The fire was quickly put out but caused damage to a pole there. A witness told authorities he did not see any suspicious activity before the fire began. MG&E was called to check that pole. Power restored then within the hour. Almost all of South Central Wisconsin is listed in the moderate to high category for fire risk right now. We were talking about this yesterday on the 11 o'clock show. And yesterday, the DNR went on to respond to 11 fires around the state. Even though you heard Charlie say at the top of this half hour, rain is in the forecast, you'll want to steer clear of burning items on your land. Composting, recycling, or taking items to a landfill are recommended as alternatives. And now for a crime tracker 15 alert. Police are searching for a man accused of knocking a person out while trying to rob a woman. Happened just before 1.30 this morning. This was on Winnebago Street. Police say a man and a woman were walking when that robber jogged up to them and punched the man. The suspect then tried to take the woman's purse. An officer was responding to an unrelated call when he actually saw the attempted robbery. That suspect is described as a 20-year-old white man who is 6 feet to 6 feet 3 inches tall. Madison police are also looking for a man accused of stealing a 75-year-old woman's purse. Police say the victim was getting out of her car on Buse Street just before 7.30 last night when the robber grabbed her purse and ran off. The woman was not hurt. The suspect is described as a white male in his 30s wearing a button-down shirt, tan shorts, and tennis shoes. Happening today, a peaceful protest over those so-called Jesus lunches will be held near Middleton High School. A group of parents made it their mission to give Middleton High School students free lunch while discussing the Christian faith. Well, the lunches have grown, so they were moved to Fireman's Park, which is basically right next to the school. The Middleton Cross Plains School District leases that property, and the district is calling for an end to the lunches. The feedback we've got has been, gotten has been on both sides. Um, some parents are, are very concerned and stating, um, why don't you just let, you know, the Jesus lunch go forward? It's no big problem. It's part of, part of a public park. They don't generally address the problem with the lease or they're not as aware of that. NBC 15 obtained a copy of the lease agreement and it states the school district does not have exclusive use of the leased premises.